Lin's sanity was truly an enigma in NBA history as it was one of the most improbable and unanticipated runs ever. Jeremy Lin captured the hearts of the nation and a whole lot of basketball fans around the world. Lin's sanity was a remarkable feat, and in a sense, incomparable. Nothing in sports history even comes close to the hype and craze that surrounded Lin for a brief three-week period. During that time, Jeremy Lin was the biggest thing in basketball. And looking back on Lin's sanity's Cinderella run, it really makes you realize how special of a time it was in basketball history. While he certainly will never make the Hall of Fame, his story will live on for generations. A little over nine years ago today, Jeremy Lin authored one of the quintessential moments of this decade in sports. With the Knicks and Raptors tied at 87 in the final seconds at Air Canada Center, Lin calmly pulled up for a dead-on three-pointer from the top of the circle, and his life would never be the same. Lin puts it up! Jeremy Lin attended Palo Alto High School in California. As a freshman, the 5'3 point guard was brought up to varsity for the team's playoff run, which in the grand scheme of things kinda went under the radar. Nobody really talks about this. However, over his years in high school, he grew to 6'1". In his senior year, he was the captain of the boys basketball team. He led his team to a record of 32-1 and won the Division II state title after beating the heavily favored Modern Day of Southern California, 51-47. He was awarded the Northern California D2 Player of the Year. Lin averaged 15.1 points, 7.1 assists, and 6.2 rebounds, while also adding on 5 steals a game during his senior season. However, he never received a scholarship offer from any school in the country. Lin attempted to play college basketball at an Ivy League school. Harvard and Brown were the only two universities to offer him a guaranteed spot on their basketball team, so Lin kinda obviously chose Harvard. In his sophomore year, Lin earned the honors of all Ivy League second team, while averaging 12.6 points per game. In his junior season, Lin moved up and was named to the all Ivy League first team, where he averaged 17.8 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 4.3 assists per game. Lin was once again named to the all Ivy League first team in his senior year. He averaged 16.4 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. After his senior season, Lin declared for the 2010 NBA draft. During the draft process, he attended the Combine. However, for someone like Lin, being athletically off the charts was unexpected. However, as we all know now, Jeremy Lin is full of surprises. He tested off the charts for speed and agility. His average speed was in comparison to Derrick Rose and John Wall. And his agility splits even edged out John Walls, who is commonly referred to as one of the fastest players in the NBA. However, even after all of this and lighting up the Combine, he ended up going undrafted. Had he been drafted, Lin would have been the first Ivy League player drafted since 1995. Shortly after the draft, Lin had offers from the Lakers and Mavericks. However, he decided to sign a two-year deal with the Golden State Warriors. He made the opening day roster, however, did not make his NBA debut until the second game of the 2010-2011 season. This made him the first Harvard graduate to play in the NBA since 1954. However, during that season, his playtime was limited and he didn't get much of a chance to show what he could do. However, the next season is when Jeremy Lin set the world on fire. In February of 2012, he put together an improbable run for the New York Knicks that would forever be remembered as Lin Sanity. Lin, a bench player at the time, was only averaging 6 minutes of action per game before the fateful day on February 4th. That day, Lin came off the bench and played 36 minutes for the Knicks. He scored 25 points and dished out 7 assists en route to a 99-92 victory over the Nets. His life would never be the same after that performance. Jeremy Lin put a struggling Knicks team on his back for three weeks, leading them to seven straight wins and 10 wins in 13 games. Lin averaged 22.3 points and nine assists per game over that magical stretch. He scored a career high 38 points against the Kobe Bryant led Los Angeles Lakers on national television. Lin's rise to stardom was unbelievable in its own right, but it was even more unprecedented considering what his career was like before Lin's sanity started. Lin didn't even see the floor in more than half of the Knicks games before February. He was at the end of a bench on a team that had lost 11 of its last 13 games. The only reason Lin even saw enough playing time to become a star was because head coach Mike D'Antoni got fed up watching the team struggle and decided to mix things up. 
Little did D'Antoni know, he was doing much more than just giving a few extra minutes to a bench player. Lin then exploded for over 20 points in six straight games. On February 14th, Lin solidified his legendary status by hitting a game-winning three against the Toronto Raptors. He scored 27 points and tallied 11 assists in the game. A few games later, he had 28 points and 14 assists in another win against the Dallas Mavericks. And the NBA world could not get enough. Jeremy Lin tore his meniscus in April of 2012, putting an end to Lin's sanity for good. He sat out the rest of the 2012 season and was cut by the Knicks afterwards. Since then, Lin played seven more NBA seasons with six different franchises. Lin started in Houston with the Rockets, where he started all 82 games and averaged 13.4 points per game in 2013. A year later, he moved to more of a bench role and his minutes diminished. He did, however, record the best shooting numbers of his career. Lin signed with the Lakers in the offseason and went on to shoot a career-high 36.9% from three in 2014. Again, his minutes and points per game dropped from the previous year. Lin went on to play for the Charlotte Hornets and the Brooklyn Nets in the next two seasons. He was a starter for Brooklyn in 2017 and averaged 14.5 points per game, his highest since his season with the Knicks. However, injuries started to pile up for Lin around this time. He missed 46 games for the Nets in 2016 to 2017, but he finished the year strong. Unfortunately, Lin ruptured his patella tendon in the season opener the next year. He would end up missing the entire season. Lin returned to the court in 2018, where he played for both the Hawks and Raptors as a bench player. His final stint with the Raptors was the worst shooting period of his career, and Lin was forced to move on from the NBA following the 2018-2019 season. After his NBA career had finished, Lin signed with the Beijing Ducks of the CBA for the 2019-2020 season, when it was clear his NBA options were limited. He ended up leading the Ducks to a 32-14 record. Lin averaged 24.4 points and 5.8 assists per game, leading the Ducks in both categories that season. He scored his career high of 36 points in a victory over the Guangzhou Long Lions. And as of more recent, Lin has joined the NBA G League signing a contract with the Santa Cruz Warriors. In his first game, the Bay Area native went for 29 points and switched a game-best seven triples, with nine assists as the Santa Cruz Warriors beat the Westchester Knicks 124 to 116, which coincidentally was exactly nine years from when Linsanity all began. Hopefully Jeremy Lin can fully make his NBA comeback and potentially make an appearance come playoff time. Multiple playoff contending teams could use Lin's services as a savvy veteran with scoring ability. But anyways guys, that was a look back at Lin's sanity and truly reminiscing in the nostalgia of one of the most unexplainable periods in sports history. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to drop a like and comment and subscribe if you're not already. And see you guys later. Deuces.